few weeks because the choir is getting ready to take its summer hiatus. We love our choir, don't we? Let's hear for our choir. <laughs> Basically come out and practice and sing for us. We're going to do some anthems that are choir picks. And so I'm going to do my sermons based on your anthem picks. That's a little challenging for me. But you'll understand, I think, when you hear what they're going to sing. They're going to sing a song called You Raise Me Up, which is not exactly a church song, but it has become one that really resounds with people of faith. Now, the story of Peter getting out of the boat, this is not the first time Peter got out of the boat, was it? When else did he get out of the boat? When Jesus called him to leave his life behind as a fisherman. Jesus said, come with me, I'll teach you how to fish for people, and Peter gets up and goes. Without any question, without any hesitation, he goes with him. That's some faith there, isn't it? But what are some of the other, you're going to have to help me out this morning, because I'm a little tired up here. You're going to have to help me by telling me what are some of the other stories of Peter that you remember that stand out for you from Scripture? Hello, 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 hello. What did Peter do in Scripture? He denied knowing Jesus three times. Not his finest moment, was it? Because he had just at dinner said, Lord, even if the others abandon you, I will follow you to the death. And Jesus looked at him and said, Oh, Pete, my pal. That's another paraphrase. But that was his closest friend, his dearest compatriot. He says, Peter, 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 Satan's going to sift you like wheat. Before the cock crows, you will have denied knowing me three times. And certainly he did. What else is Peter known for? What is, give me another Peter story. Peter at the Transfiguration. He's up there with John, right? And he's given a vision of Jesus being uncovered. He sees who Jesus really is. Jesus is glowing. And next to him is Elijah on one side. And who was on the other side? Moses. We're going to have to do some serious Bible study here. Either that or get you a little past your shyness here. So he's standing between Elijah and Moses, the law and the prophets. The prophets and the law, actually. Elijah being the prophet, Moses bringing the law. And Peter does what? Instead of standing there just in awe, he says, we've got to build a house. We've got to stay here. We've got to capture this moment. He didn't have cameras in the day, so he had to build a tent for them to sleep in. And God has to say, hush, Peter. Listen, listen, listen. Then there's the time when Jesus is with Peter and he says, who are people saying that I am? And what do people say about him? Peter said, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Some say you're the Messiah. And he says, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you're the son of the living God. And Jesus says, I can build a church on that. Now that you know who I am, i got to tell you what's going to happen to me. I'm going to be crucified. And he goes, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear it, Jesus. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Please don't tell me that. He goes from being the rock upon which Jesus will build his church to Jesus saying what to him? Get behind me who? Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Peter is all over the place, isn't he? And even when, after Jesus is raised from the dead, they're having breakfast on the beach and Peter again leaves the boat, jumps out of the boat and swims to shore because he recognizes Jesus. Jesus says to him three times, one for each denial, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, of course you know that I love you. And he says to him, what? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. So Peter has a rugged time, doesn't he? He is Jesus' closest companion on the trip. But he has a lot of ups and downs and oopsies along the way. No more than this one where he's called to him. But think of it for a moment. They're in a storm. Jesus is up the mountain praying to his father on his own. As he often did, he sought solitude, he sought solace, he sought time with his father, his creator, his God. But then he hears, help me, help me, help me, coming from the guys on the boat. How many of you have ever been in a storm on a boat? Anybody ever been in a storm on a, an ocean liner? It's pretty scary, isn't it? My parents went on a cruise once and said they watched their luggage hit one wall and then the next wall and then the other wall, the next wall. They tried to get to the infirmary and found that the infirmary was coming around giving everybody on the ship something for seasickness because everybody was sick. Lots of the glassware broke on that ship that week. But imagine doing that on a little wooden sailing vessel from the first century. 
little fishing boat. They, they had a good reason to be scared, didn't they? A lot of fishermen drowned at sea. Now, Lake Genesaret is only 13 miles from tip to tip. That's what the Sea of Galilee really is. It's a big lake, an inland lake. Anybody here ever been to the Great Lakes in the United States? They're pretty big, aren't they? But you can go to the place where the Edmund Fitzgerald sank and see the monument there for that. So imagine doing that in a little fishing boat in the first century. No wonder they were yelling their heads off. They were scared to death. And they look up and they see Jesus walking toward them on the water. They've seen him heal. They've seen him raise the dead. They've seen him feed the multitudes. They've seen him perform miracle upon miracle upon miracle. What do they do? They go, ah, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's a ghost. Not great faith there, right? And Jesus says, cut it out, another paraphrase. He says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Should I have my take heart? No, I didn't wear my take heart, stole today. We have one that says take heart that Toby made for me at Rubius a few years ago. But Peter, in true Peter style, because he really bumbles through his life, doesn't he? Peter says, if it really is you, tell me to come to you on the water. That's pretty brave, I think, don't you? Unless he's thinking it is a ghost and I'm off the hook. But Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat. That is an amazing testimony to faith, isn't it? Jesus says, do you come? And you get out and you walk on water. But immediately what happens? Fear takes over. Disgust. Anger. All those crazy emotions inside him take over, and he goes, people can't do this. This is what I do when I take off in an airplane every single time. We're going down the runway, and I say, you know, this should not happen. I'm not meant to fly. Lord, 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 help me. Be with me. So I always pray the breastplate of St. Patrick when I'm flying. Christ above me, Christ below me. Hold me up, Lord. But Peter says, I can't do this, and starts to sink. I told you before, you're all so lucky I'm not Jesus, because I would have let him sink. I would have said, all right, fine, buddy boy. There's your faith. But Jesus doesn't do that, does he? What does he do? He reaches out to him and grabs hold of him and pulls him up. That's who Christ is. That's who God is for us, the one who pulls us back when we're frightened and overwhelmed. you got to call out some stuff now. What are the things in life that are overwhelming you right now? Because there are a lot of things overwhelming you right now. My mother's health, my mother's situation. What overwhelms you right now? What? Math testing? That used to overwhelm me. I used to be so scared of math. Those numbers would always jump out and bite me. Map testing. Okay, what's map testing? Wow, three days of testing that counts for 30% of your grade on everything. That's a lot to worry about, isn't it? What else overwhelms us? There are kids in school who are bullied every day, and that's overwhelming, isn't it? What overwhelms you guys, you bigger people out there? How about the fact that there has been a mass shooting in the United States every day in the year 2023? Every single day there has been a shooting of five or more people. Yesterday, 15 people going shopping in Texas. We're coming up on the one-year anniversary of the Uvalde school shooting. And we're getting ready here to meet with the county to plan for an active shooter drill for our little two-year-old. That overwhelms me some days. What other things overwhelm you? What are the things that say, I cannot walk on this water? What are the things that steal your joy? Anybody here have health concerns or love somebody who does? Or money concerns? Or political unrest that just seems to go farther and farther and get more out of control all the time? How many of you are afraid to go into Baltimore City anymore or into a city for fear of what might happen to you? Mm-hmm. Lots of things overwhelm us. That's when I think we have to really look to Jesus. I, had asked, I sent Mike a picture for the sermon slide, but he didn't use that one. But how many of you have been in my office and seen this painting over my desk? It's called The Hands of God. It is 
looking up through the water at the face of Jesus reaching down. It's Peter's perspective. And that's the one that hangs by my desk because I can't tell you how many times I look at it. I'm like, Lord, lift me up. Pull me out of this mess. Which is why we're going to sing this. The choir's going to sing the song that it's singing. And it's not exactly a sacred song, is it? It's a secular song, but it has been recorded. More than 125 people have covered this song. Josh Groban had the most famous version of it. But he doesn't have the only one. It's been recorded by Christian groups and gospel groups. It was nominated for a Dove Award. Because it has a wonderful line in it. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. Only one person can call you to walk on the sea, and that is Jesus Christ, your Savior. It's a wonderful opportunity that this song gives because it is a secular song, but it's a secular song with sacred meaning and sacred worth. There are so many people in the world who do not know the love of a Savior. You do. You have it in abundance. You can share your own vulnerability, but that's hard to do, isn't it? Share your vulnerability with someone else to say, I really struggle with this, or I have trouble because of this, or I cannot overcome this, and to remind each other that Christ will reach to you wherever you are. I preached this passage once at the funeral of a young man who had taken his own life. Someone said, I don't know how you could say anything good about him. He's in hell. And I said, you do not have that power to judge someone else's soul. It's a young man who had been addicted to heroin and alcohol. and He got out of prison, and he was stronger when he got out of prison than he'd ever been before because he had been off all substance abuse. But he got out and the pressures of life overwhelmed him. I said in the sermon that day, I said when he was walking on the water, he was doing really well, but then somebody decided they'd give him more drugs and pull him under again. But do not think for a moment that Christ was not with him and pulled him to safety because this was a young man who loved his Savior with all his heart. But the world's problems got to him because there was no one there to remind him of God's love at that moment. We have the ability, we have the call, we have the power to remind people that God is there, ready to pull them out when they start to sink, to restore the joy of salvation. That's what we prayed all those weeks in Lent. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Joy is in happiness. We get those confused all the time. Happiness really depends on what's going on around you at the moment, doesn't it? But joy is the presence of Christ no matter what you face, the one that pulls you up when you start to sink. Don't let anybody steal your joy because only you can let go of it. But you could be the joy for someone else. You could be the hand up for someone else. You could be the heart that reaches out and reminds someone that they are loved. Because this song speaks to so many people. This is the first song that reached 76,000 downloads on Music Notes, the sheet music company that we use sometimes to get our music. The first song to reach that many downloads is a song that's powerful and it speaks to people. Tell them who it is that lets you walk on the stormy sea. Tell them who it is who comes to you when your soul is weary, when you don't think you can go on. Tell them about your struggles and you will bring someone else to hope and wholeness. That's why 12-step programs work. because They don't say, this is what you need to do. They say, this is where I was when Christ came to me and pulled me up. We're going to listen to the choir sing now. You raise me up to all that I can be. I think it's amazing that there's one verse and then you just repeat the chorus again and again and again and again, just like a praise song. But it is a song that speaks to us, that speaks to me of Christ and his presence in my life. Let someone else know who it is who pulls us up when we fall. Amen, amen, amen.